you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey there, how is the weather where you are? Today on the day I am recording this, it is absolutely perfect day weather-wise. A little breezy, but sunny in the 70s. It is so freaking nice. We had storms roll through last night. I don't know if I've mentioned here, but I'm now living in Dallas, Texas, which is part of Tornado Alley. So we pay attention to weather forecasts and freak out a little bit if the storm sirens malfunction. Spring is a volatile time here. Anyway, the storms rolled through last night just as I was ready to fall asleep, and I found that to be perfect. The wind was pretty intense, and I could see through my windows. The trees were almost dancing around. Lightning was flashing in the sky. The rain was pouring down. I remember thinking, this is beautiful. Perfect sleeping weather just lulled me right to sleep. Yeah, I'm weird like that. Give me a good storm and it's like a lullaby. No thunder though. I don't know what lightning without thunder means, but it's all good. I just know I slept so good. With that, it's time we talk about basic instinct. No, I'm not talking about the hugely popular movie with Michael Douglas and Sharon Stone although it could certainly fit in quite well. By the end of this episode, you should be able to make some connections if you recall that movie. It has been just a few years since it was released. 28 years to be exact. I looked it up. Oh my gosh. Or maybe you'd like to watch it again to refresh yourself and see Sharon Stone's infamous miniskirt scene. Bad ass. It was kind of shocking back then. Anyway, you probably already know that all humans have basic instinct. It's a real thing, not just a clever title of a movie. It's instinct and it's basic. (laughs) What you probably don't know or recognize is how it can drive our behaviors without us really even thinking about it. Below the conscious level, it's always there and it's time that we get wise to it. Listen, the human brain is an amazing thing, very complex, always developing. It's a key component of the central nervous system, how we move, how we freaking function. We don't give it much thought, though, do we? It's really a wild thing to have. It's what makes us human. It's what separates us from the rest of the animals, our complex emotions that and opposable thumbs. It's, it's fascinating, really. Here's a definition of basic instinct that I found on the Googles. Brace yourself for this one. It very much sounds like it's coming straight from a textbook, but I'll tie it in for you with a real example later. Just try to let it sink in for now. Are you ready? Here we go. The definition of basic instinct. A largely inheritable and unalterable tendency of an organism to make a complex and specific response to environmental stimuli without involving reason. Whew, okay. That was a lot. That made me think a little bit gosh, but don't worry. I'm not going to get cerebral on you. And yes, that pun was totally intended. 
I'm using this time to explain to you in the simplest of terms, not in that textbook language, but in the simplest of terms, how this shit works. So listen up. It's very important. And another one of those foundational concepts that once you know it, it will help immensely to be on to yourself. If you are a returning listener by now, you should know that I like my analogies. I simply find it easier when explaining concepts like this, and I like to think of my brain as a very powerful computer. It's interesting to think of it that way. Think of how we watch all these sci-fi films that have both cyborgs and humans, and you can always tell the difference, can't you? Because there's nothing like a human Even if we are walking around with a powerful computer between our ears, we can't be manufactured or replicated. I don't care how good the AI gets in the years to come. We humans are still going to remain so very unique because of how we think and feel, how we emote. This analogy, though, of thinking of your brain as if it is a computer, I do find helpful. Here's the way I think of it. There's this baseline of code that is our default design. Every single one of us have it. Pre-programmed, hardwired, no escaping it. It's there. That's our basic instinct, this line of code. And can also be referred to as the motivational triad. It is essential for our survival as a species. And it's designed for three things. Seek pleasure, avoid pain, conserve your energy. Simple as that. Basic AF. Now, as we grow and develop and our brains are continually developing, even after we reach our maximum physical growth of adulthood, we are enhancing and upgrading our internal operating system. This, of course, can be in the form of new knowledge, learning new things academically and also anecdotally. You obtain a result from a certain action, and this gets layered in your programming so that you have a sense of what to expect the next time. Say, uh, touching a hot stove. You get burned from it. This is registered in your program, and you probably won't do it again. That's pretty basic. Avoid pain. There's no involving reason here. There's no need to. Your brain doesn't go into questioning mode looking at scenarios or calculating risks before removing your hand from the fire. To tie it back to that definition that was a mouthful, you have a specific response, remove your hand, to environmental stimuli, the hot stove. Without involving reason, your reaction is almost immediate. Instinct. We each do this on an individual level. This continuous enhancing and upgrading of our internal operating system. We also do it as a species. This is how we have evolved from living in caves and running from wild animals to having a whole lot of creature comforts like electricity, like cars and supermarkets. Okay, side note, my husband likes to joke that our dog thinks he's the best hunter ever when he comes home from the grocery store. Seriously, she is in awe of it. He's unpacking bags upon bags of food and she's watching like, wow. (laughs) The reason we have all these things, these creature comforts, and that we'll continue to get even better things, it's not because of our basic instinct. That's simply why we're still here. It's because we also have a prefrontal cortex. Although, where are the flying cars? Where are they? Seriously. Let's look at what the prefrontal cortex controls. Problem solving, thinking, planning, judgment, emotional expression, creativity, and behavioral control. Oh, that's interesting. If we as a species didn't have the ability to be creative and design new things, we'd still be living in those caves running from the wild animals. It's what makes us human and not just another animal with those same basic instincts, the motivational triad. 
seek pleasure, avoid pain, save energy. So the prefrontal cortex has helped us to evolve from living in caves, which is most certainly admirable, but it's those basic instincts that have kept us alive to do that. Without those instincts, we wouldn't even be here at all. We would, we would be extinct. Those three functions, that baseline of code in the program that we all have, helps us to avoid pain by staying away from danger. We are able to reproduce through pleasure seeking. We conserve our energy so that we can run fast when we have to. That program is always running in the background, but we live in a very comfortable world, don't we? Comfortable compared to undeveloped parts of the world or in comparison to still being cavemen, for sure. Think about how comfortable we are. Access to resources like clean water, electricity for all of our gadgets, lots of gadgets, lots of gadgets to check out on endless hours of entertainment, online shopping, and pretty much anything you want with a few clicks. So many avenues of nearly instant gratification. Medicine, synthetic drugs, all kinds of ways to feel better. And so these instincts that we have within us get applied to things that our primitive brain views as pleasurable or dangerous or too energy draining. It's what keeps you from getting out of bed early on a cold rainy day to go to that gym class, save energy. It's what prevents you from having what might be a hard conversation that is sure to lead to an argument because that's the thought in your head, what you're anticipating. Avoid pain. It's what has you pouring the wine as soon as you get home from work because you want to relax. Seek pleasure. So much of what we do these days is automated. Many of us have handed off the reasoning and thinking part of our brains in favor of basic instinct because it's just easier. It's easier to stay in bed longer than you meant to. It feels good to get a little buzz going and distract your thoughts from the fact that you didn't get that promotion you really wanted. Instinct doesn't come with that voice of reason about how fortunate you are to be able to afford that gym membership in the first place or generate some gratitude for being gainfully employed. It's your higher brain that does that. So this is a major reason why we numb that basic instinct, the motivational triad. We can get the trifecta through numbing. We avoid the pain by trying to replace it with something pleasurable and conserving of energy part that just falls into place automatically, doesn't it? I mean, don't tell me you're on the treadmill with that bottle of wine or box of donuts. No, you're not. You're sitting on the couch, zoning out on a screen, TV, your phone, whatever. TikTok, take me away. And the treadmill has become a very expensive clothes hanger. Now, I'm not informing you so that you can now validate your actions or lack thereof. Oh, it's just my basic instincts, that motivational triad, just spending some quality time with my primitive nature. Um, no, I'm not telling you this so you can add it to your extensive catalog of cop-outs and excuses and the reasons why you don't want to change yourself, work on yourself, better yourself. You don't want to look at the parts of your life that are actually making you miserable or ultimately prolonging your pain. I'm also not telling you this so you can beat yourself up. There's a balance here. There's always balance. I'm telling you this so that you can start holding yourself accountable, so you can start questioning from your higher thinking brain. You know the area that's responsible for problem-solving, decision-making, and creativity? That part of your program. 
I'm telling you this so the next time you find yourself on autopilot reaching for a bottle in the liquor cabinet or digging through your pantry or fridge or scrolling for hours on social media or your favorite shopping site that you stop before you start and you ask yourself, what's wrong, hon? Because we don't do that. We just need to soothe ourselves and we have no shortage of options, do we? As I mentioned earlier, so many of us have access, we can even have every single thing we could ever want delivered to our door. Most of us are, that are listening to a podcast can do that, can't we? I mean, we can even have cars delivered. We don't have to freaking leave our couch at all, especially right now, do we? Maybe you're working from home uh, during the pandemic, but you're, are you taking care of yourself? I'm not talking about just physically, although I do hope you are. When is the last time that you spent some quiet moments with yourself and truly listened to the chatter in your brain? Maybe even spend a few minutes taking notes like you would for an engaging speaker that you'd paid good money to see. Do you know what the value of understanding yourself is? It's fucking priceless. And it's also hard. The exploration can be painful, uncomfortable. Sometimes there's no pleasure to be found in those dark corners, only pain. Easier to avoid. Save my energy. Pass the popcorn. I'll zone out on a movie. Maybe basic instinct. I'd like to share a brief excerpt from one of my favorite authors, Pema Chodron. This is from the book, Living Beautifully with Uncertainty and Change. I think these words fit very well with this topic. Pema writes, pleasure and pain drive us all the time. The attraction is simple. We want pleasure. We don't want pain. Our attachment to them is very strong, very visceral at either extreme. We get that clenching in the gut feeling of being hooked both when we crave something, when we're consumed with wanting or needing, and when we're adverse to something and trying to push it away. We can spend a lifetime chasing after pleasure and trying to get away from pain, never staying present with the underlying feeling of discontent. But at some point, it might hit us that there's more to liberation than trying to avoid discomfort, more to lasting happiness than pursuing temporary relief. Right? That book is so good. Highly recommend. I read some of it last night while that storm was rolling in. Listen, it's not easy. It absolutely is not. And you have free will. You have choices. You always have. It's just that now might be just a suggestion. Now might be a good time to find yourself. And I don't mean in a woo-woo way where you're meditating for hours on end, although meditation is absolutely bomb. But I'm not talking about meditating and burning incense while chanting. Hey, if that is your jam, I'm here for that. Love it. Love it. I'm talking about getting your ass up out of bed early, especially if you have others in your household, so you don't use that as your excuse, and spending some quiet time with yourself, with your thoughts, and writing them down and getting some insight from your developer. You can believe in a higher power all day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about yourself. You are the one that keeps layering new programs on top of that basic instinct. You do it through your experiences, through finding your desires and new ways to meet them, through seeking what lights you up. You learn what you enjoy, what you fear, and you repeat these things until they become automated until reaching for a glass of wine to take the edge off becomes automated. You form habits, if not physical addiction. I'm talking solely about the habits that we create through repetition of what feels good or numbs away what feels uncomfortable. Physical addiction always, always requires medical intervention, and that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking to all of us in that space 
between functioning just fine, and I'm using air quotes here, functioning just fine through the fog and the filters that we put in place. And it starts with your primitive brain, that baseline programming that can't be rewritten. It's always going to be there. This is for you to know, simply to know. I repeat, do not use it as an excuse or to rationalize or shrug off. Oh, well, that's just the way I'm programmed because that is bullshit. We don't all overeat, overdrink, soothe ourselves with shopping or waste away the hours on various forms of media. No. There are plenty of humans out there who don't fall into that honeypot. They don't get sucked in. And there are also plenty of high-functioning, successful people who aren't even close to being in touch with their highest selves and their greatest potential because they are numbing away with something. So that basic instinct is the way that we are all the same. That is our common ground. How it shows up in each of us is where our uniqueness comes into play. And that's worth being aware of, is it not? This is knowledge. Knowledge is power. It is your power. That's not just a buzz phrase. That is true. It's something that can never be taken from you. And we initially think of this in the academic sense. And while it's certainly true that it is, I'm not sure that enough of us think of the knowledge we can attain from truly knowing ourselves. That's what I'll talk about next. You know you have that primitive brain and your basic instincts as a foundation. You know you have layered on your own experiences, desires, and habits that are unique to you. You know that you might need to explore the idea of digging a little deeper without hiding under that cloak or wearing the mask you present to everyone around you. At this time in the podcast, let's bring in a roomy quote. There is a life force within your soul. Seek that life There is a gem in the mountain of your body. Seek that mine. Oh, traveler, if you are in search of that, don't look outside. Look inside yourself and seek that. Always amazing. Always. Rumi is timeless, and I will continue to weave his quotes in wherever I can. I hope you're ready. We're on this journey and you'll come to love where you're going because where you're going is toward your power and your freedom and it is amazing. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, I would be honored if you leave me a review on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to work with me, you can start that process by heading over to SunnyTheLifeCoach.com and clicking the corresponding tab. Let's do this. Shine on. Shine on.